Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. This is, as always, Northwest Small Batch Brewing. And uh, today I want to do a little backwards thought here and think about how did I come up with my recipe for the beer that I made last week? So if you haven't seen that video, I made a beer last week and I will post a link to it up here that you can click on and check that out and then come back here or wait till the end of the video and I'll post a link to the video and you can watch this one and then go back however you want to do it. Uh, but last week I made a Doppelbach. So I've been doing a series of these and I don't know if they're helpful or interesting, but uh, we'll see how it goes, uh, how I came up with the recipe. So um, before I get started, uh, do me a favor, if you're so inclined, and do that little youtube -y thing and look down and hit the uh, subscribe button. It really helps the channel out and keeps this uh, train rolling and it keeps me motivated to keep putting out new videos. This is, if you're wondering, the last, I might be able to get one more pint out of it um, on my keg. It's a uh, oatmeal wheat stout. Cheers. Mm, okay, so st to start with, as with all my recipes, you decide what, what kind of beer you want to make. And I knew I wanted to make a Doppelbach. So you go over to the National brewersassociation.org website and it's under education and beer styles and you can download all the years you want of uh, beer styles right they go it goes back they they have every year for many years I just use the current year 2022 um, and they just revise them every year in case there's any changes that they need to make or additions um, and so I looked up the Doppelbach and some of the information you will find is that um, it should be clear and have no haze, which to me means if you can, pressure ferment it and then use clearing agents. Uh, number two, uh, most of them had toasted malted barley, caramel, toffee flavors, dark fruits, um, low hop aroma. So that means there's not gonna be a lot of hops in here, very low bitterness high ABV, low esters, again, low esters, no diacetyl, again, equates to if you can pressure ferment, it's probably the way to go. Uh, OG between 1074 and 1080, final gravity between 1014 and 1020, ABV between six and uh, just shy of 8%, IBU 17 to 27, color 12 to 30 SRM. Okay. So that's your basis. You go there, you get your basis on what you, you need to be for this recipe if you're making your own recipe. Then a couple other things. You do some research, you look it up online, you get some books, you find out. Basically what you wanna look at is um, prior winners of homebrew competitions. There's lots of homebrew competitions around the you know world and, and the country and you can find out all the people that enter their beers um, list their recipe and, and how they built it. So if they're a winning recipe or winning beer, you can look at the recipe, right? And then you can compare, let's say, 10 winning recipes for Doppelbox and what kind of grains and what ratios did they use. And uh, combined with a little bit of research and history, you get an idea of what kind of grains at what ratios you should be using or what kind of hops are usually used. So. Uh, with that being said, a little fun history. Uh, I'm not going to go all of it because there's a ton of history on Bach beers. So uh, I highly recommend if you are interested in that uh, go, to do a little research because it's pretty interesting. But uh, Bach apparently means goat. This is, that's what I was told uh, in German. And it refers to the kick that you get when you drink a Bach, especially a Doppelbach. Uh, this beer was originally made and drunk by the monks in uh, um, Germany and so that's where the recipes originally came from um, you can find commercially made uh, of, of these Doppelbox from Sam Adams Salvatore is a real German version uh, I hate when my computer wants to update in the middle of doing a video um, Optimator um, yeah so there's, a, there's a few out there um, you have two options for the base malt. You can use two row 
uh, you know, PAL2 row, which a lot of them did, or you can use Munich. However, if you use Munich, you want to back off on the crystal malt because you're getting some of that from the Munich malt already. I am obsessed with Munich malt. So I'll, of course I chose to make it an all, all Munich um, because I love, I just love the flavor of Munich malt. So uh, 75 to 90% Munich malt. Uh, I believe I ended up doing 90%. I did 90% Munich malt. Um, ba, 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 yeah, so I then added, so it's a real simple build for, there's only three, um, kinds of uh, grain in mine. Um, so I use all Munich for the base. Uh, I did see a note that said, make sure that you use European Munich, uh, as opposed to American Munich, uh, unless you're very careful about reading and checking on this. Apparently, uh, European Munich is made with two row, which is really good for conversion. Whereas American Munich oftentimes is made with six row, which is not so good. So check and see, I can tell you breeze, which I, uh, don't kill me here, but I think it's Wisconsin that was where breeze is made. I checked on it and it is actually a two row, uh, Munich. Uh, the one that I picked, which was, um, I thought I did. Oh, maybe not. Didn't I pick? I guess I got Great Western Munich, but the Great Western American Munich is also uh, two row. I double check that. So just make sure when you're doing Munich. Um, I chose to keep my crystal on the low end because too much crystal becomes clingy and it's not good. So 120 Lovabond crystal, uh, 9%. And you can do anywhere from 90 to 120 Lovabond crystal for this particular recipe. And then chocolate malt. I did... Um, what did I do? 1% chocolate malt. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of chocolate malt for this one. Um, you could have done a little bit more and you could have adjusted the ratios a bit, but that's what I chose. Um, you could also use, I think, um, uh, like toasted barley or whatever, but um, no, I chose to stick with these three. Uh, mash temperature, or the average mash temperature when you look at other recipes that were winning recipes was around 155 Fahrenheit. And so that's what I mashed at, 155 Fahrenheit. Um, hops, you want to use noble hops for, uh, you know, this is this is a Munich beer. I mean, not originally from Munich, but it is, it was reborn in Munich. So uh, I used Hallerto. I mean, there are others you could use, but by far Hallerto was the most common hop used for this type of beer. So why change what everybody's already using? So you want something like a 60, 20, 16. You can play around with this. I decided to do, um, I don't know if I, yeah, I have the percentages. So I have around 66% Hallerto for the bittering hop, you know, the 60 minute edition. I have a 22%, um, yeah, for the what I would guess you call the flavor hop at 10 minutes. And then the aroma hop, which is at flame out, um, I've got 11%, but you can go up to like 16. Basically, you want to just keep, make sure you watch your IBUs. I did choose to keep the IBUs on the low side. So IBUs are 17 to 27. Mine were 17.2. So I'm in the very, very low end uh, of allowable IBU, but that's the way I wanted it. I'm not a big fan of um, bitter beer, and that's, that's how I wanted to do it. I wanted to accentuate the flavor of the malt. Um, you know, uh, other than that, I just made some notes like because, and this is true of any high gravity beer, you want to really shake it or aerate it really well because it's such a high gravity. Don't skimp on aerating. Use two packets of yeast instead of one because of the high gravity. Uh, I chose to use, um, where is my, here it is. Uh, Fermentus makes a German lager. This is a Saf lager it's from the Safale line, right? Saf lager, German lager yeast, W3470. Um, there are other yeasts out there that you could have used, but I did a little bit of research and compared from what other people were saying, and I felt that that was going to be the best option. Um, and nutrient, right? Ye yeast nutrient. Whenever you have this high gravity, you want yeast nutrient. Uh, to help the yeast out as much as possible. That's it. That's how I came up with my recipe. Um, so you get the, the you get the basics, you know, on what the guidelines say it should be. 
then you start researching winning recipes uh, to see what kind of grains at what ratios they used and what kind of hops they used. And you can usually research the variety of beer to find out what kind of hops and stuff are typically used to build a recipe that meets you know, that, that particular type of beer. So that is all I have for today's video. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Of course, as always, there'll be a, there'll be a video next week. Every Saturday uh, evening, I post a video. Uh, and so until then, um, hey, thanks for being here and uh, happy brewing.